Section 8.2, margin of error and sample size for proportions. So in that previous example in last section, um, we found a 99% confidence interval for the true proportion of happy churchgoers was 36.52 to 49.42%. Um, so let's pretend someone gave us this information, we didn't do the math, and we were curious to find out the margin of error. So if we want to find the margin of error from this information only, because we didn't do the math, I'm going to draw the interval again. So I'm going to put 36.42. I'm going to put it in decimal form. Sorry, 36.52. So 0.3652 up to 4.942 in decimal form, just so it's a proportion. And then the way these intervals work is our sample value p hat should always be exactly in the middle. So the piece to the left and the piece to the right, left and right, should be exactly the same length. That is my margin of error. So the right side is adding the margin of error and the left side is subtracting the margin of error. So one thing I notice is that the width of the interval equals two margin of errors. MOE for short, because it's a lot to write. And again, I'm coming up with two, one in each direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the width of the interval and divide by two. So error will be width of the interval divided by two. It'll always be two because it's one in each direction. So the width is the biggest number minus the smallest number, 0.4942 minus 0.3652 all over two. Um, we actually already know the answer because we did find this last time, but this is a different way of getting the answer, especially if you didn't do the work and you just maybe saw a confidence interval in like an election poll or something. So we'll find the difference, enter, and then divide by two. And I think this is what we got last time, 0645. This was the plus or minus piece of the confidence interval. So there are two ways to decrease the margin of error. Maybe we've decided 6% is too much error. So um, one option, this has been decreasing error throughout the semester is to increase sample size. The second option, which is not as good, would be to lower the confidence level. We learned last time that the intervals got wider with a smaller percent, with a larger percent, sorry, so a smaller percent would be a more narrow interval. But this is worse. This is basically lowering our standards. So really the better case, which has been true for the whole semester, is to increase sample size. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what sample size we need. Um, this is what a lot of statisticians do before they even research, is they find a sample size they need to meet a cutoff for a margin of error. So we want to find a sample size required so that the margin of error is at most 3%. So we need to do a little bit of work before we can answer this question. So I'm going to remind you of the formula for margin of error. It was the plus or minus piece. It was E equals z star um, times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Um, I'm going to do quick algebra just to derive a new formula, and then you never have to do this again. So I'm going to solve for n, because I want to solve for sample size. And then once we derive this new formula, you don't have to do this again. So divide by z, because we're trying to get n alone. point of this is just to convince you that this formula didn't come out of the air. It's coming from stuff we already know. Um, to get rid of a square root, we square sides. So on the right side, those go away. And so on the left side, we have to square it. So we get e over z squared equals p hat q hat over n. Perfect, and then we're solving for n, so what we can do is we can take reciprocals. So if we just flip both sides, that's also allowed. So z over e squared 
equals n over p hat over q hat. And we've almost got n. We just multiply both sides by p hat and q hat, and they cancel out. And so we get this new formula with a few small problems. So n is p hat q hat times z star over e squared. The problem is, is if we're solving for sample size, why would we possibly have a sample? Right, this is something we want to do before we have a sample. So if we're solving for sample size, then we probably don't have a p hat. Um, also, should we remember that the original value in this spot was p, the population proportion, which we also don't know, right? We're starting from scratch. We don't know anything about the proportion. So what we're going to do, as weird as this is, is we are going to guess the value of p. So instead of using p, we'll use p guess. Instead of using q, we'll use 1 minus p guess, which is q guess, and then times z over e all squared. So let's box this formula. We'll use this in a second. Um, and so how do we make a guess? So right now, we probably don't even have a reasonable guess, right? We have no idea what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a guess that avoids underestimating. You don't want to underestimate your sample size because you'll have too much error. So you can always maybe have a few too many people, um, but if you have too few, it's bad. So underestimating means your sample is just a little too small, but it's okay if your sample is a little bit too big. So again, I'm going to go over some algebra. If you've never learned parabolas, then you can just jump to the conclusion. But if you've learned parab parabolas, then you'll kind of understand where this is coming from. But if not, don't worry you can jump to the conclusion. So I'm gonna take that formula above, this one, and I'm gonna replace um, the parentheses with A because it's not changing. Um, we're making P guess is my variable. So that's like my X in terms of an algebra class. So I'm gonna replace it with an A. Um, that number is called a constant because it's not changing, but the P's are changing. So I'm going to replace it with A. I'm going to factor the A out front just so it looks a little more normal. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute. And we get this thing called a parabola. Um, so if you remember algebra, this would be similar to like AX times AX squared. It makes an upside down parabola. If you have no idea what a parabola is, just take a deep breath and use the conclusion in a second. You don't need to know a parabola to be successful in this class. But for those of you who do, at least I can convince you where this is coming from. So the graph is a parabola that opens down. The down is because the x squared term is negative. And it ends up having a vertex at 0.5. So even if you don't know what this is, you can visually see at 0.5, that's the peak of the graph. So that's the significant part here. And so it turns out that p of 0.5 is our safe guess. So if we use 0.5, right, this creates the largest possible value. So think about n being the vertical on this graph. So if we use 0.5, this is the largest sample size possibly needed. And so this is often an overestimate, but it's much better than underestimating. And so we will use 0.5 when we do not have a guess. Otherwise, we're going to choose the point that is closest to 0.5. So let me show you what I mean. So sometimes we might have a previous confidence interval that we can use to make a guess. If you do not have any information, use 0.5. Um, but sometimes we have a previous one, like above, and we've just decided it's too much error. So we can use the previous interval to make a better guess. So example one or A. Our previous interval was 0.375 up to 0.425. Let's say maybe we had too much error. So we want to find a new interval. We could use 0.5, but we could save some money by having a slightly smaller sample size and having a better guess. So 0.375 up to 0.425 is my interval, my previous interval. 
And so the rule is to choose the closest point to 0.5. So 0.5 will be outside the interval. So my closest point would be 0.425. So that's my P guess. And that's coming from this curve, right? It would be the highest point, 0.425, right? The curve gets higher as we get closer to 0.5. That's where this idea is coming from. I like to draw the number line. I think it makes it very visual. So my next interval tells me, so maybe my previous interval was 672 up to 0 0.804. And again, maybe it had too much error, so I need to find a new interval. So my P guess is the closest point to 0.5. So 0.5 looks like it should be on the left side on this one because these are bigger than 0.5. So 672 is my closer one. That's my P guess. So it's not the biggest or the smallest value. It's what's closer to a half. So drawing the interval helps a lot. All right, now my next interval was 0 0.471 to 0 0.593. And again, there's too much error, so we need a new interval. Um, if I want to find sample size, my P guess, again, is the closest point to 0.5 within the entire interval. So it's not necessarily an endpoint. Since 0.5 is in my interval, that's my guess. So essentially it's which endpoint is closest unless 0.5 is in the interval. Hopefully that helps us understand it. And then what if we're bigger, for some reason we are confident that it's bigger than 80%. So 0.8 and then bigger, which would probably go up to one, right? One is the biggest it could be. 0.5 will be somewhere on the left. So which endpoint is closer? In this case, it would be 0.80. So my P guess would be 0.80. And so this is so we can estimate sample size with not overestimating too much. Uh, you don't want to overestimate too much because then you're wasting money. And it can be really expensive to do surveys. So we want to have a good estimate um, without spending too much money. So let's go back to the churchgoers and find the sample size required so that the margin of error is at most three. So this is the question we started this section with. So we're going to plug into the formula P guess 1 minus P guess times Z star over E. So we need to find all those pieces. So E would be 3%, which is 0.03. Um, let's do Z star first, just because we know that. And then P guess is what's new. Um, I think we did a 99% confidence interval. So we're going to put 99 in the middle and 05, 005 in each tail. And then you can look back at the problem or you can go back to the table and we learned that Z star was 2.576. That's that last column, 005, and we just go down to the Z score. All right, and let's figure out this confusing P guess thing. So my previous interval, we went over this at the beginning of the section, was 3652 up to 4942. This is just the problem we started this section with. 99%. And then we want to have a conservative guess for P. So we want to stay within the interval. Um, we don't want to use 0.5 if we don't want to, if we don't have to, because we'll waste money. Um, but we want to choose the best guess within the whole interval. So we don't want to use 0.3652. We might underestimate. We're going to choose 0.4942 because that would be closest to 0.5 on the interval. So my P guess is 0.4942. So we might overestimate a little because um, we're using the endpoint, but we're saving money by not using 0.5. Um, we'd rather be a little bit over with sample size than under because if we're under, we'll have too much error. Uh, if we have a little bit less error than 3%, right, that would be okay. If we end up with two and a half, right, that's fine. But if we end up with three and a half, that's too much error. So three is my absolute cutoff. So let's plug in. So P guess is 0.4942 times one minus 0.4942 
times z, 2.576 over e, 0.03 squared. And then I prefer to just type everything at once since we have parentheses on our calculator. So 0.4942, parentheses 1 minus 0.4942, parentheses 2.576 over 0.03 squared, 1843.02, and this is an absolute minimum on sample size. So I think most of us probably want to round down to 1843 because it's so close, but we're always going to round up to a nice number. So we need a sample size of at least 1844, just to be safe. It's possible this is slightly too many people, but it's better to have too many than too few.